Hello, I'm Sean Richards of Not A Yes Man's Economics, and I want to talk to you today about inflation. But I thought I'd start with a slightly different tack. Coming up will be a picture of a humble, in fact, not so humble cauliflower, because it looks quite nice. And the reason why I'm doing that is it's something I bought last week. And there was a particular note in the UK about a month ago saying that the cauliflower harvest, which I believe is in Lincolnshire mostly, was going to be awful. Prices were going to go through the roof. Cauliflowers will be tatty, ropey, poor, however you want to put that. As you'll be able to see for yourself, it looks rather nice. And I bought it for 59 pence, which is quite a bit cheaper than usual. So the message here is don't believe what you're told on inflation because we get misled quite a bit. And that was a clear case of saying, oh, it's going to be a surge, it didn't happen. Perhaps a stronger influence that might be on its way is the issue of pork prices and what's going on with China. There's an issue with swine flu, swine fever there that's taken out quite a bit of production. Prices have risen there. Not so much sign of that hitting places like the UK, there, although a couple of things have gone up in price, so we'll have to see. If we step back, this whole issue of inflation is a really big deal. Why? Not only in itself as a measure of what we're paying more, but for example, it goes into numbers like economic growth or real wages that are a big deal. In the UK, there's a particular problem as what they're trying to present as the headline number, and this is called CPIH, sorry for the alphabetic spaghetti. What that uses is a thing called imputed rents. Now, how does that work? It goes as follows. There's an issue around how you measure people that own their own homes, um, how you put inflation on that. So rather than using the prices you could use, house prices, for example, you might think, or perhaps what people pay monthly, you know, so some idea of mortgage costs. Oh, no, they don't use that, which are A, easily measurable, and quite a lot of people would understand and off the top of their head maybe even know what they are. No, they fantasise that these people that pay rent so if you own your own place, you pay rent to yourself. And, oh, how does that work? Anyway, it's called rental equivalents. They make these numbers up, and then it all fits nicely in their theoretical world. Except no one actually pays it. And this is the problem. So this then comes out when we look at the inflation numbers. There are all sorts of issues. One of the ironies of that situation is, in the UK, if you were going to impute anything, then you might do that for car prices and car sales. Why would you do that? Well, because the vast majority of the market is leasing, about 90% now is in the leasing rental model. So as you can see there, try and evaluate via rents, well, kind of works, doesn't it? Because the actual bit where people buy is now very small. Moving to the actual inflation numbers, there was some good news, which I think in terms of general trends will be repeated around the world. Why? Well, because there's been some of the flowing in influence of cheaper oil prices. The time of the Saudi Aramco attacks come and the bounce in oil price, and it came back down. So in the UK, producer prices, which is the idea looking further down the chain of what inflation we might get, are quite weak. And the output measure dropping to 1.2%. And then the actual input measure, I think, was minus 2.8%. So not only a lower rate of inflation, but actual price falls. A small factor, if we remain where we are, because obviously there's all the Brexit issues in the UK, looking forwards will also be the higher level of the pound, should it stay there. So the outlook looks, in general, good worldwide. It may be a little bit better for once for the UK if the pound should rally. This actually is a welcome development. You wouldn't believe it if you went around the world as central banks because they want higher inflation. But the truth is the ordinary person benefits from inflation being lower because then they pay less for things. As we live in a world where wage rises don't rise by the amount they used to. So if inflation's a bit lower, everyone will be better off. Thank you.